Hello everyone, welcome back to Abodery. If you're new here, my name is Innes and I share tips, inspiration for living a slow handmade life. Today we're talking about the handmade side of things because I made this beautiful, <laughs> I think, patchwork stocking for my little boy and I would love to show you how to make it today. If you're new to patchwork, don't be intimidated, I'll walk you through exactly how I do it in a way that will give you a really beautiful finish and be quite straightforward. So out of breath these days. <laughs> you guys know I'm having a baby soon. I'm very, very pregnant. Okay, I think that's everything. Let's get on with the video. <laughs> I use five different complementary fabrics to create my stocking. I'm mostly using scraps for this project, since patchwork is ideally suited to using up lots of tiny pieces. I also used about half a metre of backing fabric. I ended up using two smaller pieces of fabric in two different colours, but you could use just one or you could use more than two. I've put a link to the pattern I created for the stocking in the description box. Of course the stocking is such a simple shape that you could always just draw your own. I started by cutting three inch squares. You'll need about 35 if you're using my pattern. I laid out my little squares in the arrangement I wanted them to be in the final piece. And at this point it can also be helpful to check that you'll make a large enough piece to eventually cut your stocking shape. This isn't the whole piece that I created for my stocking, but I wanted to show you how I do the patchwork easily and quickly. Once I've got my squares laid out how I want them, I pile the pieces in each row in order on top of each other. I'll then take one little pile to my machine and stitch them together in pairs without breaking the thread in between. This is called chain stitching and there's so much help on YouTube if you want to find out more about it. I'm using a quarter inch seam allowance. Once I've sewed all my pairs, I cut the little connecting pieces and then sew each pair together so I've got a whole row. Then I press the seams so the raw edges are all facing in the same direction. Once I've sewn the next row together, I press all the seams on that row in the opposite direction to the previous row. That means that when I come to pin the rows together, I can nestle the seams into each other so that I mostly get everything lined up. It's definitely not perfect, but it's close enough. Then I'll stitch the rows together and press that seam open. When everything's sewn together, I'm taking my pattern and pinning it onto my patchwork fabric and cutting it out. At this point I also cut out two of the stocking shapes from my backing fabric and three pieces of backing fabric for the cuff. Next I pinned the front stocking piece to some batting and cut out the shape, leaving a little bit extra around the edges for trimming later. In these shots you can see that I've already attached one of the cuff pieces to the top, but just ignore that. I realised later on that I did that too early, so just pretend it's not there. Then I laid my patchwork and batting pieces on top of one of the pieces of backing fabric and pinned through all three layers ready to quilt. I drew some straight lines with erasable markers that had a guide for my quilting. When you come to quilt the stocking, it's a really good idea to use a walking foot if you have one. It really helps when you're sewing through lots of thick layers. Here's what it looked like when I quilted the top. Mm -hmm. 
Next I took my second piece of backing fabric and laid it right sides together with my quilted piece. You can see here that my iron had a bit of a leak when I was pressing it. Hopefully yours won't look like that. Once that was sewn I trimmed off the excess batting and zigzag stitched all the way round. Next I assembled the cuff, I laid two backing pieces down followed by a piece of batting and finally another backing piece. And once it was stitched together it looked like this. At this point I attached the cuff. This is a little counterintuitive because you want to slide the cuff over the stocking so that the right side of the cuff is facing the wrong side of the stocking. It will feel wrong, <laughs> but I promise it will work out. Make sure that the side of the cuff with batting is aligned with the quilted front of the stocking. Once the cuff was attached, this is what it looked like. But I still needed to finish the end of the cuff. I pressed back about a quarter inch and attached a crochet trim all the way around and then also went back and added a small loop of the trim to the top seam so that it had a way to hang. And this is the final piece. I hope you found that enjoyable, inspiring, useful. If you would like more from me then do hit subscribe down in the description box or you can head over to Instagram where you can find more regular updates and ideas from me. Otherwise I will see you all next time and Merry Christmas!